controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Uh okay, so <laughs> I was like, Am I gonna do that? They're like, is that how we're gonna start this pod? Well, what I love so much is that horniness. It's not just about the uh it's a lot that comes before it. What okay. do you mean? Well, we're oh, gonna. I'm oh. gonna get into the stages of horniness, oh. but they can start really early. What me grabbing my tit right now, touching no, my nipples? No, it was like the letter O is often like oh, an orgasm. orgasm. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. I oh oh. So okay, before we get there, I just have to say that. <laughs> and then, then, okay, so there's a lot of people arguing where the term horny comes from because I think it's a really good as word. a word as a it's word. A, it's one of those words that I don't like. Think we need to change. No, me. You know what I, I mean? Agree. I'm like, it is great. Horny? It's just like horny any language. I always language. think about the way Greg writes it. Anytime you text or like do a tweet or something, it's always like with the two dots over the O and with an I. Yeah. It's, and so I always think of horny as like horny. horny. Yeah. It's like. I, like you're like Icelandic. It auto corrects to the Bjork version because I did it once. Horny. And now whenever I see it, I'm like, <laughs> I love that. And I actually, the only thing I write on Instagram ever is just horny, horny for this. And I realized like with a four. And, That's your anyways, personality. I'm like, I'm like really obsessed with horny. Horny for this. <laughs> so. Um, if you like, okay, so they think that it maybe had to do with like horny also meant like calloused and hard. And then over time became like a hard, yeah. maybe hard penis, hard clitoris. That's what one people think. But I have to say that also if a mineral <laughs> what? is compact, homogeneous with a dull luster, it's considered a horny mineral. And I just love that there's like geologists. Oh my God. Who are like, That's a wow, horny mineral. that one. And I mean, I must describe it as horny. Okay, well, I must bring up the fact then, which came first, the horn or the horny? Oh, the horn. So then don't you think there's some <laughs> connection between horns, which, you know, are phallic in nature? Yes, and also horny is used for that too. If something has a horn, yeah, that's you can say I that's a horny thing. Yeah, I was going to say, when I was looking up research, <laughs> like the it. word horny was actually not the best search term. It would bring up so many studies oh. that were about like animals with horns. Oh, well, yes. When I was actually sexual on, arousal. Like, scholar. Yeah, yeah, sexual arousal yeah, was yeah, 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 the yeah. term that would bring up actual journal entries. Yes. So, so today like we're talking... Scientists are scared to say horny. Yeah. You <laughs> know what? Scientists are really scared to say horny. And, <laughs> and we're going to break that mold. literally tweeting about it this week. And I think it's really annoying. Because I'm like, it's so... <laughs> <Say> it. <laughs> we just want people to be interested and to learn science. It's very frustrating. Okay. I have like really, really good examples. <laughs> of them of like Of horny. like them not trying Dancing to say... Dancing around every it's other word. insane. Okay, this is okay. <laughs> this is a hilarious way that a journal was essentially saying we fucking tonight. Okay, <laughs> most sexual activities are preceded by approach to a potential partner. With potential partner is understood any individual that is attractive to another actor and who might be willing to engage in sexual activity once approached has been accomplished. After completing one's approach, physical interaction with the partner and eventually copulation may become possible. I can't tell if it's the way you said it or if that didn't make sense. Okay, it <laughs> literally didn't make sense. And I read that word for word and it was a little bit contextually like weird because you know when you read science studies and they're like four sentences long and then you you're kind like, of like shake your head and you have a moment and you're like, you're literally just saying if a horny. person <laughs> is horny for someone, they might have sex. Yeah. But it's like with all these jargon words and weird like context switches uh, anyways it's frustrating because i just think we should say horny i agree i mean that's like lesson for science in general is like so often you're right you can turn four sentences into one into one and it's not for <laughs> lack of removing detail no it's just like for some reason it's said in a way that you're like that feels like you're yeah. trying to sound smart yeah. or trying to trying to fill a word quota yeah but i do think sometimes they're trying to With make respect. sure they're We've not there. they're not like taking it's, they're really working hard to make sure what they're saying isn't taken out of context, which I think That's is like fair. what I appreciate about yeah. it. Just sometimes I'm reading and I'm like, this is laughable. But you know, <laughs> we there's something about the field that makes you do that. Even when we were in university, I feel like writing papers, you would naturally go into that tone of voice. Mm -hmm. Not because we were worried about being misconstrued, but it was like expected that you speak in this sort of like professional way. Um, so getting a boner at night is called nocturnal penile senescence. Which is like... I think that's fine. But it's still funny. It, it's it's still like, imagine funny. you could just write, you got a boner. Like this many people got boners at night. Like it would just help. <laughs> I, I can get over like when a, when a phenomenon has a specific terminology because it's like, 
obviously there are different colloquialisms <laughs> in different countries yeah, and different fair. communities. And so the science community is going to have their own. And the British gonna... people are like, we don't know what a boner at night is. Literally, we know, the, yeah. <laughs> we know not to be in our <laughs> They would too. The British people would be yeah. saying that. They'd be like, we call it a chubby or something <laughs> weird. Um, okay, so... I feel like they would say stiffy. Yeah. It's stiffy. stiffy. <laughs> so sexual arousal, getting horny, yeah. is commonly thought of as just a genital thing. Here we are in the studies. I'm like, I thought that. And then it's like, no, 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 no. It's not just getting a boner. It's not just getting wet. It's not Sounds just getting like- a hard clit. Yeah. But in academic text, horniness is more complex. So what I was reading is that it starts with information processing, like in your brain. In my head, it was kind of like, you're on a TikTok and all of a sudden... It's a horny TikTok, yeah. and your brain kind of has this like moment of like, wait, <laughs> like, like it literally is like processing. Is this relevant for me? Are we gonna do this thing? Uh. <laughs> and then arousal in a general sense, not in the not in the gonads, like just like literally excitatory, like mentally mental. Maybe there's like you know, like essentially like excitatory endorphins. neurons, endorphins. You might be excited, you don't know why. Okay. Then the, there's incentive motivation, which is like literally when you decide if you're motivated enough to like, honestly, like get hard or or like, you know, get the labia going. And then there's the genital response, which is like the boner, the wet, and then yeah. potentially an orgasm. But it was like kind of cool to be like all of those things fall under different realms of horniness. And I was yeah. like, that's super cool. <laughs> that is cool. Because I guess it's so true that you can be horny like in any of those ways, you don't have to be physically horny. And you kind of decide. Like, you might be like, I'm horny, but, like, I actually have to go to a meeting. And then right. your body's like, well, we're not going to get a it's contextual. Chub. Yeah, but I might be <laughs> mentally. Yeah, yeah but you might be it, like, and then yeah. after the meeting, you might be like, I still am horny. Like, I, it's- <laughs> I get the sense that, oh like, women God. are more in tune with that. Like, it, it's often stereotyped that it's harder for men. <laughs> no pun intended. Because there is, like, seemingly a more obvious connection to your physicality of horniness Mm -hmm. like as a man you can like have uh an erection and not feel that horny too yeah so there's like but i think for like young guys who maybe are still learning about their bodies there's like this obvious thing that happens yeah that you can see that connects to your emotional horniness also that is interesting what's amazing about this field of study is that it is more researched on women than men. Oh, really? Because, this is what I read in a couple studies, because of... They're desperate to crack the code. (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's probably it. No, I'm kidding. It's, like, because women have such, like, a more powerful and are way more important than men in their, like, menstrual cycle in the sense that they are childbearing and they're hormonal... They're more hormonally complex in many ways, like on a month to month basis. Sure. For that reason, there's been more research about like hormones in mm. women and a lot of horniness has to do with hormones. Oh my God, no pun intended. <laughs> so it's like, I thought it was kind of cool because it's like, yeah, they're actually like, there's just so much more information and abilities to study women. You know, it should be called Hormy. Hormy. <laughs> I'm Hormy. <laughs> Horn me. My hormones are going, I'm horny. And then therefore me want to be a whore. <laughs> exactly. Whore me. Whore me. <laughs> That's the better term. Can we get that trending, folks? Whore <laughs> me. So the sexual response in women, like I read of, is like desire, arousal, orgasm, and resolution. So they also like included that for some reason, the resolution. And um, yeah, there's really interesting things about like desire in women because it is a lot different in the sense that like when they get to the motivation aspect, they like have to deal with more like essentially like intimacy, pleasure, like choice. Like apparently there's just like a lot more like complexity happening in female bodies or it's just more studied that they know more about it. And then the arousal, which consists of like dreams and fantasies, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with your genitals or like your clitoris or your labia like you can come from just thinking about arousal like women are more likely to do that men can also do that so you mean without any physical stimulation yes that's what they're saying based on the female body believable that is like more possible (laughs) but then there is also the orgasm which is like when essentially you get to like a certain threshold of like Yeah, touching like the clitoris, the labia, vagina, plus like a lot of mental like 
arousal and horniness, you pass this threshold and you get repeated one second motor contractions of your pelvic floor. This is a woman. I'm just like getting turned on <laughs> and then followed by two to four seconds of repeated uterine and vaginal smooth muscle muscle contraction. That's like the O orgasm. And then that's all like carries information to your brain, which goes to pleasure sites. And then like you have an orgasm, but they were just saying that women's was like, it's not as it's more complicated and interesting from what I was reading. Whereas with men, you can have an orgasm without like coming, but it just is more straightforward mm. and less studied. Um, it's like, I'm sure everyone wishes this. I just want to know what it feels like for, well, not to be just, a woman. who Yeah. And, and like, oh, I was going to yeah. say that, but then also I'm like, <laughs> even like for other men, I'm just curious. Like, is it the same? Also, I think we need to stay I because assume. of like, being trans and also like a lot of this research on men had to do with people who were like had hypogonadism whether it was from an injury or also like um being born intersex so it's like we also have to say when we say women it could be someone having a vagina yeah and there's such a like plethora of like genders and sexes from a scientific perspective so like it's also really hard to say that anyone like almost what you're saying anyone's orgasm or horniness is the same as someone else's right because of the way that like spectrum our baselines way. are yeah yeah and i mean even within um yeah i just think that oh my god i want to have another like, person's your orgasm blue, blue. So yeah bad. Just, well, i'm curious like i assume obviously <laughs> oh my god. you can see from people's like reactions yeah and faces and stuff <laughs> obviously there's like it's similar so it probably feels oh similar my god. but i'm so curious particular about like the female body just because obviously that's probably very different seems uh, to be much longer obviously seems to like in some ways take longer to get there but i really i really want to have a vaginal orgasm <laughs> like so badly like i think that's why i even read that out like i was just like i need to read that out because when i was reading it i was like holy shit man <laughs> like i was like i want that mine feels like dumb compared to that well i wonder okay so at that point <laughs> what I guess, coming yeah, what are we talking about <laughs> yeah up, up until orgasm like you are obviously horny i've just like it's interesting because horny to me even though i don't think this when i'm saying it out loud but it's like <laughs> horny is almost the part that comes before for the sex yeah and once you're having sex obviously you're still horny but it's like then you're having sex so it's like you're you have now satisfied your horny desire but in my mind, there's something about like the hmm. horniness being like the tension, the, creep, before. the lust. Yeah, the part where you're like, uh, have to make that decision of like, am I going to now pursue this? Mm. Whether that means with the person or masturbation or porn or whatever, right? Like, oh, so like the horniness ends when the sex starts. I'm not saying this is like a no. Technical I, well, definition. according to science, it's like that's not true. But yeah. I, but I know what you mean. Obviously, I wouldn't say in the middle of like <laughs> sex, I'm not horny. Imagine the second <laughs> that'd be like 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 an Adam Sandler movie. The second he has sex he loses his horniness or like something stupid <laughs> that does like happen that. for a lot of people yeah that's true like people get nervous people have all sorts of things happen or you build it up so much more in your head and then you're doing it and you're like what's for dinner <laughs> well i mean maybe it's worth me talking about one of my studies right now yeah. which is the impact of being horny on decision making which i thought was so interesting and i'm sure like <laughs> oh lots of people can God. relate to like how once if you're horny it's like your mind it like can kind of take over your yeah I, that's like it's like do you lose control okay go. so this was a small sample size i think it was like 15 or 20 men only. okay boo i'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, and so take it with a grain of salt but i just thought it was interesting what they had found so they were literally given like a laptop where they were going to be shown porn i want you to be <laughs> in this study continue <laughs> i know i was like this is so funny and then they were given a device that would they would answer questions in that was made for their non-dominant hand so that they could be like st stimulating this is, themselves this is so hot. so it was like they i it didn't say this explicit in the study but it made it clear that they were actually not being watched you realize you weren't reading this you were just watching it's porn. Just fantasy <laughs> porn it's just like a fan fiction science okay so they're okay so they're there their non-dominant hand is using <clears throat> What? So Sorry, I'm distracted because I'm horny. Basically, <laughs> they're being shown types of erotica porn imagery. And in their left hand is this device that's going to, like, ask them questions. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, interestingly, so there's two groups, one that will not be aroused and one that will. They're in private, so they're answering these questions in private. <laughs> um, but they can't, they're not given the questions in the arousal group until they are self-monitoring that they are over 75% horny. <laughs> Oh, and they just get to choose or what aroused. that means for them. Yeah, so okay, like yeah. they have to be gauging their yeah, own arousal. Like how horny? Because the study wanted to make sure we're actually judging your yeah. decision making once you're actually 
highly aroused not when you're just like get in the room and nervous like the person has to be like yeah. no i feel like very aroused right now. <laughs> so um this is insane let me see what my i love the scientists who are like why don't we just like do this horny ass thing with these boys <laughs> i know it is such a weird study to like pay someone and be like we want you yeah. to just like masturbate and answer questions yeah. <laughs> Which is like, I'm sure there's lots of university kids oh who are like, yeah, I'll take God. 20 bucks yeah, for that. Yeah, for sure. And I there's also lots they... of undergrad people who are like, that can be my thesis. Okay, <laughs> I'll do that one. But it seems like could be problematic. Not that it is, but it's like, you obviously probably have to be so careful when you do a study yeah. around like sexuality. Like maybe we're canceled people. for even making jokes about it. <laughs> no, I, I didn't hear everyone Imagine we were canceled in the niche psychology community because we made fun of the horny study. Okay, continue. Um, one interesting thing, which I'm sure everyone can relate to is activities <laughs> that were perceived before being aroused as not sexual be, were much more likely to have sec, be sexually charged as they became <laughs> and attractive when they became aroused. Oh so there was a much wider range of activities that were sexually appealing. The Sudoku is so hot. Like look literally. The, look at the curves <laughs> on that. A. Uh, but so sexual arousal had a strong impact on three things that they were studying. So uh -huh. these were like the results. One, it impacted their appeal of sexual activities. So like what they were willing to do sexually. So the more yeah. aroused they became, the more they were willing the to do. The more they were like, put it and, in my and ass. And that included, so number two, their willingness to behave in morally questionable ways. So it impacted. Oh. So again, remember they're answering like survey questions. So when they were more aroused, they were more likely to agree to say like to something do like messed up. Maybe yeah, to do something that you would feel is maybe morally not right. Like poor people deserve it. I, <laughs> like, what, like what kind of? I think it was more like <laughs> morally questionable insane. sexual behaviors. Okay. So like Whoa. maybe. Um, choking somebody or like i'm not saying wow. that's morally questionable if it's consensual but yeah. obviously like pushing the line of yeah they were more willing to take those steps further yeah and then three their <laughs> oh willingness to engage in unsafe sex increased a lot the more wow. aroused they were wow um, and uh the final sort of piece was that they were the subjects were unable to predict these influences on their own behavior. Like they didn't think they changed. And then all of a I don't know they that they like, wouldn't say they didn't think they changed they at were all, like, but they, <laughs> it was in the aroused state that all of these things came out. They're like, remember when you said you wanted to choke someone? They're like, what? I did. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was an interesting study. Again, it was a small study, but I That's mean, it such tracks a fun like study. when people are horny, like if you think yeah. about like going on grinder, people like go down wormholes where all yeah. they can focus on is like getting yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's like the most gorgeous day outside and they might just be inside just in the wasting block. Wasting time. Wasting yeah. time being like, wanna see my dick? <laughs> yeah. No, horniness is definitely not going to help you make decisions. No, I don't think so either. Um, where do we go from there? Um, I kind of, I'm just like laughing. I wanted to bring up like how it would be so great to be in psychology classes and then get to do that study rather than get to do a study where it's like, choose which apple, like the blue or the red. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it'd yeah. be so fun to get in there and they'd be like, so you're going to be watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But you'd probably become so desensitized to it. It's kind of like if you were in porn or yeah. studying porn, you would probably just be like, this is just my job at this yeah, point. No, like, there's nothing... Yeah. I wonder how that would impact your own personal arousal. Yeah. Right? Because that's also a conversation. We've talked about it in our porn episodes about like that extended exposure and how the more used you are to something, the further you can often push it. And so like I, that obviously impacts your arousal capabilities mm -hmm. too. If you are needing to take things to the extreme, you probably won't be as aroused as easily. Hmm. Or if you are uh, like satisfying your arousal needs all the time, then you probably won't be getting as aroused. That's true. That kind of leads into the brain stuff where it's like, yeah, it's like really intense to be horny. And if you're too horny a lot of the time, it can be like hard to not be horny. And then you end up seeking out being horny all the time. And then it becomes a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, remember we watched that therapy show and that one guy was like, like so a lot of people have like really intense sex drives. That was like one of the couple's problems. Yes. Okay. I can talk about that. Sure. That's my, it's like further down, but I'll start talking about it now. Okay. So they're like, it was like, really interesting for them to try and figure out what like causes someone like to be horny from like a hormonal perspective and to be honest there there's no baseline answer to this but I kept reading them saying you can't say this is the reason you can't say this is the reason but study after study was saying that it probably is linked to higher testosterone mm. in both men and women okay but at the same time 
there are a bunch of studies that are caveating it, but some of them were really good studies I was reading that were really interesting. And so what they were able to do is that people who have hypogonadism or who produce lower levels of testosterone, they then get supplemented with testosterone. Mm -hmm. And they found that in a lot of these studies, pretty large studies, people would find an increase in sex drive. Hmm. Once they were given the supplements. Once they were given the testosterone supplements. But testosterone also has a lot of, like, does a lot of other other things and bad things to your body. And so there's, like, a give or take that sometimes, like, the more positive things that were happening were just like, oh yeah, there was like an increase of beta. I literally remember like in first or second year university, a professor being like, you know, men are just testosterone poisoned females. <laughs> and that literally. Stuck with me forever. And it's like, it was like testosterone is part of the reason why men tend to die, die earlier. Yeah. Like, like, like testosterone is like not a good thing. It's like why you're, it's why you're bald. If you're bald, like it's like, it's, it's, it's obviously it's an incredibly important hormone. If you didn't have testosterone, yeah. you die. But it's like, it's, it is interesting it's funny that to realize that some guys also- are like, yeah. and it's like, that's actually really embarrassing. You're sick. <laughs> okay. Um, and then there were, yeah, they would give people testosterone. They would give people placebo. So they would actually play with some of these people. And yeah, they'd not like, even give them. Here's some testosterone. Yeah, literally. Like or they'd give them like 150 micrograms versus 300 micrograms. Uh-huh. And there would be some pretty significant stats that the 300 micrograms would be like, hey, like I'm actually like hornier, like uh-huh. good because it's it's something that they wanted in their lives. Mm. And then they also found, this is just what, what night happens when you get nighttime boners is like a side that's always cool it's like a little bit linked to testosterone and some other hormones but they think that REM essentially your brain is like constantly inhibiting your boner mm. like it's like yeah, the baseline is like inhibited it off. yeah like it's like so baseline is like your brain's like no I don't want to get a boner embarrassing and then when you get horny your baseline's like let's shut that off and boom and things start flowing but at night in REM sleep what happens is that those neural impulses do get shut off mm. so you're getting a boner um, as because like a, a, just the, the baseline's gone. Something off. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. And so between 45 and 74 years of age, men had a clear decrease in sexual interest and arousability. Between what years? What? 45 to 74 is the study. And then they also found that there's also falling testosterone levels at that age, as well as essentially your testosterone receptors become like less sensitive. So they're kind of like, okay, as you age, you get less horny. And and so do these things happen? Like they're trying to tie it together. Um, With women, also the same thing happens between 45 and 74, sorry, 50 and 74 years of age. There's decreased sexual arousal, but also with women, they sometimes have diminished vaginal lubrication, pain, discomfort with um, intercourse and things like that. And they actually found that recent data shows that 76% of women feel like they have some type of sexual dysfunction. 70, what? 76% of Whoa. people. But this, was, this was a study. This was, okay. Sorry, this was a survey. And then um, a more recent survey found that women, 43% of women and 31% of men felt like they had a sort of sexual disorder that maybe had to do with education, their age, their emotional health. Like people weren't satisfied right. with their horn like i shouldn't say horniness but it's like it was like what i was linking when the studies i was reading well that would if i'm not interrupting you no no it's okay there's so much stuff about testosterone like it's i was just gonna say it's interesting that okay i obviously hearing that study that's what you would expect like obviously as people age they tend to say that their sex drive lowers and i think that probably happens even before the age of 45 hello um but also there's sort of this (laughs) narrative sometimes that as people get like retired and much older, like their sex drive can increase again. And it makes you realize how much it is tied into not just your age, but your circumstance. Right. So like when you are highly stressed and Mm -hmm. we live in societies that pressure like a lot on how much you work and always being busy and always having stuff going on and people are like often overwhelmed and we're living in this digital age. Like you wonder, yes, there might be a biological answer to it, but knowing that anecdotally, like some older people say there's like a resurgence, you wonder how much of it is. Cause they got lots of free time. Societal. That's so interesting because I think that's when they're talking about the horniness scale, sort of from like <laughs> the information processing to the arousal, to the decision to do something <laughs> about the horniness to the, to the sex, to the orgasm. Like a lot of what I was reading was that decision, that like decision period of like, do I deal with this is very, that's the contextual part. Mm. And that's the part that it said, like a lot of women have a lot more 
like essentially like think about it a lot more and also need to think about it a lot more even to be aroused to get to that point. And it's like, it's all those things are social and contextual and really hard to study, but it kind of like what you're trying to say is that then you retire and all right. maybe the like barriers, like your kids yeah. are in the room or like, and how much more you get when you're bored. Yeah. You know, like, like you're you bored because you, you don't have, have a job. Do. Like it's yeah. kind of interesting. Cause then you can pass that motivation threshold more easily. Like, okay, like, let's just do it. Right. But you maybe don't have like the same hormone hormones to be as horny because yeah. yeah. you're older is like, I mean, that's at least what they're saying. Yeah. They, more than one factor that yeah plays into it. Yeah. And so, and then there was another, oh, so in your brain, what's firing <laughs> is the inferior frontal lobe. Look this up, folks. Okay. The cingulate gyrus, the insula and the corpus callosum. Okay. Hot. Those are all, <laughs> those are all the horny parts of the brain. Like when you're kind of past the motivation part and you're like, let's go. And with women, they have like more relationships to like the estrogen and like estradiol hormone for horniness. And they had other studies where those people would be given more estradiol if they had lower levels and become more sexually interested. They would enjoy sex more. They would have more orgasms. And so it's like, okay, it's the estrogens linked in more to the increased sex drive in women. Okay. Also increased testosterone. Women can increase sex drive. And with men, I'm saying increased testosterone can increase horniness. But again, None of these studies said for sure. They're just mm. like, and maybe I think even if nervous. it is for sure, maybe it is just like the <clears throat> reminding that this is just one element, right? Yes. Like, like it's so much more. Like, you could be have more testosterone and be less horny because there's a lot of other things going yeah, on totally, in your mind, in your totally. body, in your circumstance. And yeah. I think it seems too simplified to just be like, here's one chemical and we yeah. give it to you and it does that, right? Because it does yeah. a testosterone does so much more than just impact your horniness. Yeah. But beyond that, too, it's like your body <laughs> is like so much more complex. Okay. Another cool study was that people with increased depression and anxiety are less horny, hmm. but they said that when people are in an anxious state, not, which is a different thing than having anxiety, they become more horny. Oh, that makes sense to me. Isn't that interesting? I yeah, kind of yeah. like that, that makes, makes sense so to me, but I'm like, that was like, a good study. Oh, I gotta do work. Here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally, it's like, but like, obviously, I was like, yeah, wait, that doesn't make sense. But then it's like, oh, wait, no, it kind of does. I feel like sometimes I get anxious and I'm like, I'm gonna go jerk off in the shower. Yeah, there's <laughs> it's definitely like, a difference between having anxiety and feeling like feeling anxious in the moment. I mean, yeah, you can find there's different types. Like, obviously, the word anxious can still be used for anxiety, but there's a different quality to that kind of like almost time pressure based anxiety of just like there's you got a deadline or something then there is to like the genuine generalized anxiety stuff and so it also was found that there's an increase in horniness in puberty in both women and men and this is linking back to testosterone that's when the testosterone levels in your body in both women and men start to increase but in women there's only a two-fold increase and in men there's an 18-fold increase in testosterone oh wow okay and then also another reason they think it might be linked to testosterone and estrogen is that women who are given oral contraceptives that can result in decreased testosterone and some people just some who take oral contraceptive pills who have vaginas become less horny. Hmm. So that's like another reason they're starting to be like, okay, what's the reason? Oh, and it's interesting that you hear often people who are on antidepressants like, uh, yeah, much less horny yeah. as well. Cause it's playing with your hormones. Which or is like what's even if they're to. hooking up, like have a harder time, like climaxing. Yeah. It's interesting. And then after coming is when serotonin is released, which is why, it feels good. Like, sorry, there's so many other really good things happening when you have an orgasm, mm -hmm. but they were saying even after the, you like, come, most. that like five minutes after, there's serotonin flowing in your body for both men and women. And that's why it's kind of like, oh, well, I just accomplished something. <laughs> Thinking of puberty is so crazy. I know. Have we done a full episode on puberty? No, nope, writing it in. Write down oh, because... well, we did a video on puberty. And but... recently we talked about puberty. Maybe we were talking about, oh, like body odor or something like that. Um, it's just such a wild time. Oh, it's such a wild to time. To just go from being some little innocent thing to like horny. Okay. <laughs> it's like the craziest thing in the world. Crazy. Like it's actually and crazy. As you age, you kind of want to deny how young I think that happens. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, there's like a pretty distinct age. Go on. No, I'm just saying, as adults, like, we look at like a 16 year old and we're like, you should not be having sex. Oh, like, you know? I see. But when they you're try that to age, on other people. You, oh my god, yeah. But when you're that age, you're like, no, I'm so. Oh my horny. god, I was and like 14. I definitely feel I was old so enough. So horny. And like, yeah, but as you're an adult. And especially, I'm assuming with kids, you're like, no, that yeah. like, can't happen till later. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. And I, I do think puberty is like 
hell, obviously, because like <laughs> you start to smell, you're like your whole body changes. But it also is so visceral. And I do look back on it and think like, wow, you were alive. You know what I mean? Like you were feeling things like it's my crazy. worry now in life is like, don't not become mundane. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like, oh, God, like I'm not like that was such a rich time. Like any song I would like hear and I would like ball my ass out and be like this. I, I like thought I yeah, was like feel it. Like when Pink was like singing about like what was that like just like a pill? I was like I'm addicted <laughs> oh to drugs. Like it was like I feel like I could just feel like a pill. yeah. Like I was like I was like yeah. Like I'm addicted. And it's like no, I was 14. I have never even touched a drug. But I was like you could feel almost like those feelings. And you see it now with like artists like the way that they like love. Even like Olivia Rodrigo, like when she sings that driver's license song, I'm like, how the hell do you know like love? Right. No. Like you're literally talking about your driver's license, but you're actually like, this is a way better song than a 30 year old talking about love because your hormones are insane and it is actually better because it's like you That's are feeling why there's it. so much music and so many yeah. movies and TV shows about being that age too because there is like, and kids at that age like connect to stuff so much yeah. more deeply i think because it, they feel it so much like oh my god maybe that's I, why they love horny songs too okay sorry continue. i feel like i didn't like listen i guess I, I, horny music was never like part it's part of like your oh it's so part of my thing me and mitch have a big issue in our relationship which is that <laughs> i find music very sexual and mitch doesn't it makes me laugh but it's sexual like which is so funny so you're I it feel might like be it's a family thing. Like, it might be a family thing, but like, like not, not that my family was like, "Come on, kids, <laughs> let's salsa dance or whatever." Well, but it's definitely cultural. Not is sense, it cultural? Because some, some dancing is clearly meant to be like very intimate physically, obviously. Like, and I, I horny danced at dance. Like, did you go to the high school horny dances? Like, I did. But you like, got to come out, out in high school. True. Like but I, I was making out with I girls like, at first and it was fine. Yeah, but even then, I, like you were just weird. Not that that's What do you weird. mean? Well, you were that's able weird. to like express sexuality. I was like truly repressed. Are you kidding me? Like horny dance on anyone in public? Are you joking? Wow. Oh my god, Mitch, that's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my god. Now I'm like, that's why you won't horny dance, because you weren't able to. Yeah, it was that's like so having to like monitor myself at all times. Like but you lived in the big city. You got to like go to these <laughs> dance parties like that weren't at your school. Shout out first of all, Homo Hop Five Night Club Literally, Toronto, First let's of all, go. I went to a Catholic school. B, I lived in a small city that didn't have like a underage club. Like you were allowed to go to a club where yeah, they would it was, make sure you couldn't drink, I guess. Yeah. But, actually like so crazy. <laughs> insane. But then but, it was like also four young gay people. That's oh, absolutely insane. I could cry what the home op did for me. Thank you. It was a U of T thing. It's like, thank you for doing something for people who aren't even at a university. It's crazy. 16. It's amazing. But that's why I think it was such a revelation to me when I finally could come out and then could but just be like, wow, that was, I'm allowed to like act on these desires. <laughs> that was still set like 17, 18 for you. And then we would go grind at the club, but you never. Yeah, because I, I assume at that now, point it's like burned in my mind. In Colombia, we ground at the club. If I drink, I could do it but i just even like in like a sexual situation music it, it's not like i couldn't listen to music it's just that that's never been something yeah. that i've turned to, oh my to God. add to like the and your family mood. aren't dancers like you know what i mean like they're yeah. not people who dance. yeah yeah that's true yeah, yeah. But it's not like your family's like sexy dancing. No, sorry. I'm not like, it's not like my, like my whole family's like grinding at the wedding. Out. But like my family, like if music's on, it's like, let's go. Like, let's dance. It's like very joyful. And it's not so much a thing that's like, like, I feel like with your dad, it's a like big conundrum. Is he going to dance? Is he not? Yeah. And it'll be like, he will, but for his wife. Right. Whereas with my family, it's like, they're dancing and no one's even talking about it. Cause like we're dancing. Like also, my parents would literally come home. They would like do salsa. <laughs> they would like, <laughs> there's like, I have memories of sitting on the couch and being like, Greg, Jill, sit down. We're going to show like you our very moves. very pure, innocent, not horny dancing. No, but I think it all links to the comfort level around dancing that and led music? to me to become so horny from dancing <laughs> like i'm just like you know I what i mean I like i love to dance and it doesn't more, have to be horny you were more cultured you grew up in a major city where you were exposed to music that was like sex music too like truly before grade what? 10 wow. i was like only listened to classical music just because i like studied piano 
I didn't I didn't really have like that big of a connection. Oh music. My God. And then when I finally like I was like, you know, had a couple straight friends and joined like a band and then I just listened to emo music. And emo, so emo music is not sexual. It's so funny because like I just picture you at home like dun, 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 dun. and then like me like, like get uh, low, <laughs> get low from the window. Like I remember that like to the wall. <laughs> sweat drop down my ball. Like I used to love fucking but grinding not, a girl to Is that, that a song. sexy song though? When the sweat drop down my ball. Yeah, but there's ah! These ideas, bro. Oh, skeet, skeet, mother. That means that means coming. Oh, skeet, skeet, motherfucker. Like skeeting is like literally coming out of your. I dick. guess, but to me, there's a difference between but- <laughs> music. I'm just saying there is like emo music where they're talking about sexual things, but it's not like you would use that music to have sex. Oh, wait, mine was a rap song. I wasn't doing emo. No, I'm just oh. I'm saying like there are emo songs similar that yeah. talk about sexual things, but. I also think there's like like no. R and B music is like horny, rhythmly sexual. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Wait, used... emo music is not horny. No, I know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I don't think a... that song you're just saying is that ho- like is horny. But no, no, what it's I not like a <sighs> sex. Song. No, it was such an awakening for me. Oh. Usher, Usher, oh <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh my god, it literally starts touching my tits. Um, <laughs> yeah, like let it burn. Oh my, god. like that is so funny. I was obsessed with Usher. Mm. And I was, you're right. Like you weren't, you were. I just didn't like, like have that many music references. Okay. Who was the first horn? Like, and now I'm like, have you ever listened to horn? Okay. Like <laughs> who do you think is like the horniest? Who's the horniest music you ever listened to without me forcing you to listen? To it? <laughs> oh my God. Like, that's such a funny question for you. I don't, I actually don't Gaga? listen to horny music. Like early Gaga, like dance in the dark. But that's not like horny music. No, I got fucked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just never listened to it through that lens. Like any music. Yeah, this is like the this is the big divide. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. like I have a full sex playlist that I have like <laughs> love and I adore and you don't yeah, okay. And like even even the idea of grinding and stuff, like only if I'm drunk would I do that. And wow. maybe now that I'm older I can start to like move past that and like see it as like fun, but there's like, you know, a resistance. Or like a block around music being like yeah. sexualized. For me. I literally grind. I've probably ground every corner of this whole house <laughs> like with my ass. <laughs> and I also like, feel like you've like ground every one of your like good female friends. Oh my God. I've, and, like, and male. And my dog. You know, <laughs> but like oh, you don't yeah. have that barrier. Like oh, even yeah. when something's sexual to you, it doesn't oh, yeah. have to. It's not crossing a boundary. No. And it's you know like I mean? that's what I think is so beautiful about grinding. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel really awkward. Is that I like, think it doesn't have to be sexual, especially when you're like a gay man and a girl. It's such a fun way to dance with someone and really be close and like move together but it's like obviously i'm not right like, aroused yeah but then sometimes i am like wow like chanaz is so hot <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's also fun it's fun to like enjoy other people's like bodies it doesn't have to be like sexual know what's happening it's like the part of the horniness spectrum like where am i at i'm really really early on and i'm really deciding now with my motivation oh yeah because we're like on camera and literally filming a podcast no i meant like when i'm grinding with my girlfriend <laughs> oh i thought you meant right now <laughs> no 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 imagine i was like right now i'm actually like deciding to not get a full chub and jerk off it's like oh cool good, I see good one when you're dancing with a friend yeah yeah. your brain even like putting that barrier for sure like i'm like i I, th- I can only imagine that like there's this assumption that it should be horny but like with anyone actually even like if i'm even if i'm like grinding with like a guy and it's not my friend and i'm kind of like okay this could be it still is like a lot of work to get for me to get from just grinding with someone to sexual but i feel like that i mean this is the beauty i think of like a uh, gay male female friendships is like, i don't think you like grind with your gay friends like i'm not saying you never have when you're drunk but like i literally did this weekend me and fab grinded so hard yeah okay uh, i'm just like but again general, it's though. like it's not a it's yeah nothing. it's like a friendship no i know yeah. but don't you think there's maybe more of a difference i feel like you've probably grinded with more of your girlfriends honestly i don't think there's much of a difference but the sad thing about our predominantly white gay friends is they're not that into dancing mm. like i do think like that's why that's i true, love yeah. grinding with fab because i know he loves to dance and i know we're just having fun i just think a lot of our friends are like not actually even that interested that's true you're right yeah i think i think when you go to even like many gay bars it's not it's not really like in white culture quote unquote. yeah i would like, i'm love sure there to are some our like, gay friends and not i don't think i, I think whereas be if same. you go to like a latin bar like of course yeah. there's like the physicality of dance everyone's there to dance yeah remember when we were in columbia and they would literally like grind we were at gay bars and they would the girls would like grind on the guys so hard they would like go down on the ground and then they would yeah. like pump them and it was like that was not ever sexual God, it was like it was that very impressive it's just like shoulders <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah well especially so if it's, especially if it's like a the type of music that yeah it's like you really do need like r&b 
like reggaeton like certain types of music to want to grind mm. and i think i was that we i grew up we were lucky like usher was big like yeah, that was true. a really important we time. were lucky <laughs> like i felt i feel lucky that usher was big but when i would go to the homo hop i would grind to like honestly it'd be like madonna <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right there was still pop music that people would grind to like hung up <laughs> i would grind oh to my hung god up. yeah i would just see like straight people grinding i think i was maybe traumatized by it and so, by grinding no uh, yeah people. well just like yeah like, no it is traumatizing even, <laughs> even sexualized music because it was like so clearly a space i was not allowed to yeah. be part of yeah or i would have to feel uncomfortable if i had to pretend to do it with a girl and i would yeah. like i i would feel like i was it's hard for me to like fake that that's so me. interesting like truly it was traumatizing because it like is when you're Represents supposed to be like grinding that. a girl yeah. and liking it yeah but then i was just like dancing enough that i was like i am liking this <laughs> yeah and, and you had more exposure and then you got to come out in high school yeah true. like there's that that difference as well yes, the privilege <laughs> the true privilege of my life wow uh, well and i still you still couldn't answer who's a horny <laughs> like i don't know what there is like, no beethoven's seventh it would have been something weird like like not that i ever listened to like john mayer but there would have been like that kind of like oh, white like acoustic music yeah. that could sometimes be sexual that one song where it's like oh <laughs> or like Jack Johnson Ooh. or something. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. Or your body is a wonder. Yeah, actually, that's horny. That yeah, is, that's there a, is horny. I, that's a like really that. good white. But I didn't answer. listen to that. I'm just like I. Don't, I really have to think deeply. I honestly it. remember that music video, and I was very horny for it. <laughs> Because it's like a girl lying in bed and he's just like, I'll use my hands. <laughs> like it's like very, yeah, like explicit. Slow and like, yeah. So uh, can you think though of other like, what are like kind of white or pop artists that like. Oh, Christina Aguilera's Dirty. Oh, true. Like that was horny. But I was never into that. Okay. It's a sin of, like, as a gay man to say, I know, but. What, that you were never into Christina Aguilera's Dirty? Yeah. Or Britney Spears' is Toxic at the time. Whoa. Isn't that weird? Uh, what? Yeah. I didn't like the, either of those songs. <laughs> Maybe Both they, like not that horny, but like sexualized. Yes, yes. And maybe I was still scared. I was like, I don't find it sexy. <laughs> I'm gay. Beyonce. What about Beyonce? I find her like sexual. Like obviously her dancing is so sexual, yeah. but I'd never been like turned on. What about the Spice Girls? Like two become one. That was horny. See, I didn't. Yeah, just I'm realizing I never saw music through a horny lens. Hmm. Maybe I, I have see a it through like an disorder. emotional. That's why yeah. I mean, oh, something we never talked about. We won't <laughs> talk that much longer, but is like this idea of emotional horniness versus physical. Yes, and how a lot of people, myself included, I think, need that sort of like intimacy or play and intimacy before it can be like. To me, that's what <laughs> would, is something that would get me there sooner. Yeah. So apparently, according to, to the brain stuff. The lust, which is the prior to the actual like copulation, if you will, is more controlled by the testosterone and the estrogen levels. And then from there, you get into the attraction part, which can be more, you know, like the actual sex mm -hmm. or like maybe the dancing or the rubbing or the whatever. That's more controlled by dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin. Mm. But then there's the attachment, which I think it was more maybe what you're talking about. This is nothing to do with when you're horny. This has to do with like baseline yeah intimacy and feeling comfortable that's more controlled by oxytocin and vasopressin mm -hmm. and but some people for me i would say that can trigger the other stuff yeah so obviously like, exactly you some people horny out of nowhere but if yeah i'm like with a person and not feeling horny like or not in the mood but that kind of stuff can change exactly like that's what i mean the oxytocin vasopressin hormones which we haven't talked about can be really important to a lot of people mm -hmm. To like, like, whereas I just need to listen to like Usher. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's like, and then I, and it's like, I just need to get right to the Usher, which gives me testosterone base. And then let's go. Oh boy. Oh my God. I really need to like Usher's in like Las Vegas. And it's like, why is everyone in Las Vegas? I hate Las Vegas, but it's like, I want to see Usher. Cause then they can just not have to travel. Like it's sweet if you're an artist and you can just have a residency. Oh my God. I used to watch videos of Usher. Like he used to do this song where he would like grind like, okay, whatever. I need to, I don't have to do it. I was going to start doing it. But yeah, like I would get so horny watching that in like grade 10. All white. He's like all white outfit. Like, like, so you just not, never, no usher, never on the, like, did you even know he existed? I knew he existed. Obviously I knew his like main pop songs. But. So even though you were gay, you weren't letting the male heartthrobs get like, what about Justin Timberlake? That was horny. I never liked him that much other than some of his Good like job. songs. I would like to sing a little bit. Like you're on the right side of her story for now. Like, <laughs> like, I was like, future sex live sounds is a sexual ball. <laughs> <laughs>
And I would like do it. Like, you know that song? Like, my love. My and love. Just, like all the to, music like, I listened to was not. It was like my chemical romance, not sexual. No, at all. that like, doesn't work. Under oath, not no. sexy. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so not sexy. It's really funny to think of it sexy though. Yeah, true. And there was a time where I thought it was sexy. But there was like definitely deep heartbreak in emo. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I would always gravitate towards. It was like I wanted to like sing because I was so sad. I was like, oh I couldn't be with god. anyone. And Mitch fell okay, in love with my best friend and then he was straight. <laughs> okay, we need to it's like, like I'm watching Heartstopper and I'm feeling a lot, honestly. Because it's about you... falling in love with their best friend. I... No, but it's like it, uh, Young Royals is also one that I loved. And at first I'm like, these are not great shows. Like they are teen dramas and they're kind of cheesy but it really does describe the emotion of being like a young gay person Ooh, okay i want to watch in that, that way i, I feel I'm like, like i don't really where's the horny uh, grind i feel like it will be harder for you to appreciate in that you sometimes need tv to be good like i feel like in oh. some ways i'm watching it and i'm like it, it's like i can understand if someone thought this is bad well but it's really for kids it, yeah it is and then the Which undertones though i'm like but it's interesting to realize this is actually the feeling you go through as like a young teen gay person and i have heard like um or seen tiktoks of people being like uh, trying not to hide my like deep like utter envy and jealousy that kids get heartstopper and i did i know so that's like Kind of nice, like that's kind of that nice the, to think that part of the like not spoiler. Powerful. You find this out in the first episode, but like the main character is like openly gay already. I'm like, that's also amazing. Like, even if there had been one ten years ago a story, yeah. they would have to be in the closet. Oh, he's like in the closet, and it would be like a hot like farmer who like actually wants to kill him, <laughs> secretly wants to kill him is the love interest, and then he would get killed. Yeah, and you'd be like, oh, that was I guess that's disturbing. <laughs> or you'd be like, oh, mom, let's go watch this game movie, Brokeback Mountain, so... where they just like. Yeah, one just gets absolutely murdered. And like ruin each other's lives. And it truly is beautiful and, the one and moving. Well, and yeah. you're like, I guess that's what I'm destined for. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, no, there is a lot of value in like the cheesy teen show. Like that's really cool. I want to watch mm -hmm. that. And I just hope there's a grinding scene. And if not, like. <laughs> not yet, but I'm only two ups in. So we'll see. Oh my God. Okay, so we're going to grind. Like literally <laughs> this weekend. We have one time like over COVID. <laughs> Once you're over. I mean, I am. I no, you're like, going to put on a mask. I don't sound disgusting. You can put a mask and face the other way. Okay. Oh, my God. <sighs> I'm so horny. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Peace.